Hello and welcome back to the Popcorn for Dinner podcast. And welcome to the new and improved Kuznestov station. Located on an asteroid for of all things. Uh, today we are going over the f- season four finale of For All Mankind. We're talking about everything about the season. I'm probably looking forward to season five, which at the time of recording hasn't been announced, but we just we we have faith. Um, joining me one final time this season. She's still reminding me that this is a place for f- this is not a place for feelings, only facts, guys. <laughs> one more time it's angel angel welcome back hello people happy holidays hope you've enjoyed the break we back and we better just like for all mankind so Ooh, okay that's a that's a gauntlet um <laughs> i feel weird like drinking my tea on this recording i feel like you i feel like I'll tom in succession there's like everybody i'm ill like i want everyone to know that i'm ill just He's like, drink so sick. like yeah like oh Tom asking for hot tea or a scarf around his neck. Anyway, that's my requisite succession name drop. Um, Angel, are you ready? Are you, how are you feeling? I'm excited. You, I mean, I haven't expressed how I feel about this episode, but damn, I felt a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, I think, well, yeah. So just quickly, guys, um, on the For All Mankind front, I think next week I have someone who, like, it's only other person, like, two other people I knew that watched the show and, like, podcast struck into about it. <laughs> And I was interacting with one of them. He wasn't even the person that like, I watched his recap to prepare for this new season. And he has Pete Peppers on YouTube. He should be here next week to talk about this season with me. Just recap about what happened this season. Uh, yeah, so it's a little for all mankind um, podcast verse, I guess. Uh, but we start our 2023 wrap up next week. Firstly, AU and TMT will come back to talk about we're going to give our five best TV episodes of the year as a really fun episode. Um. Ooh, yeah, lots of so TV. Yeah, lots of TV discussed there, and then uh, a week from then, Chinasa and Ukam return to the podcast to talk about The Bear season two, which is mm. probably the best show on TV mm. now that the others have have ended. <sighs> and then we wrap all of that up with my top ten list of the year. So yeah, fun wrap up coverage is over the next three or so weeks. Uh, okay, let's just get into it. For All Mankind, Season 4 finale, titled Perestroika, written by co-creators Matt Warper and Ben Nedevi, and directed by Sergio Miki Kazan. Uh, I, I think we're going to go beat by beat. Before then, just let's talk about what are your, what are your thoughts? Because I have complicated thoughts about this, this finale. So... But um, I think you sound I to be a lot more positive. So let's start with you. Oh, I'm... You know, you know one thing about me is, yes, I am naturally positive. But mm-hmm. this episode delivered for me in front of surprise, expectation, just general, what's the word I used? We're so fucking back energy. And I will leave this as my statement, you know, to encompass the whole episode for me. It's kind of like, you know, happy endings don't make for boring TV. They make for compassionate Uh TV. And that's what I'm going to leave this episode as. Because if you guys remember, we came into this with a lot of death predictions. Mm -hmm. And Safe to motherfucking say, shout out to Paul Mankind. They said, look, I know you guys are traumatized. You're used to suffering. You're used to pain. You're not used to people winning. We'll show you something new. We'll show you something so bright, so hopeful, so new that uh, that's all I can do. Okay, yeah, that's that's very I like I like where your head is at. I think so. I definitely like the look. I'm still fully on board the four mankind train. I think the only maybe this because it's the first time this first time I ever podcasting about this show. It's the first time I'm having to actually like talk about Analyze it on a week basis. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I think some things you're right. Like the lack of deaths really did surprise me, but in a good way. But I think the thing that kept on, I kept on bumping up against this episode is just like, why are you doing this? I kept on mm-hmm. bumping lots of character motivations and reasoning, and I think we'll get to there as we go um, beat by beat. But it just, a lot of things didn't seem... They were adding up for you. It's like, hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's yeah. just, I was just like, I don't... I can feel that. I don't see why this character is doing that. But I think we're going to go... But again, it's just as a whole... It, it Actually, if anything, this... It's funny, this is probably the first finale that has made me like really excited about the next season 
at the prospect of the next season because, like, previously, obviously, like, it leaves you in interesting place. I mean, oh, that was a great season. I'll start the next season. But this one, I'm like, oh, I, it could go you so many different places. Going. Exactly. Yeah. So this is the that was one thing. This finale definitely end. opened it. I was like, hmm, I actually don't know. And a lot of characters, which I, keep, I think we touched a lot of characters, we don't actually know where they are. We don't know mm-hmm. what's happened to them. The only person that we actually have a good idea of, it's not even that good an idea, is, is, um, is Dev, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and so I guess like, Margo. I mean, yeah, well, Margo could be dead by the time the Eesh, next season starts. Yeah. I guess anybody could be dead by the next season, but you get what I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I guess, yeah, you're right, Margo and 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 Dev. But let's okay, so let's start. We'll go off beat by beat, and like we've done previous weeks, whenever we want to just pause and talk about a, a plot point, we'll do that. Um, we start off two months ago at where we quickly become we quickly realize is the place Daniel and Coos buried the gun eight years ago. And I think when I first saw the the wrench, I was like I, I think I gasped, I was like, oh, because I was like, oh, maybe we're done with that. We're done with that gun. But then I started thinking, and this is one of the first parts of the logic setting, I was like, it feels hmm. like very poor form from Daniel and Coos to leave that gun there. And just leave the wrench to remember that this where the gun yeah, is like why it's one to thing to like it's one thing to obviously when they were going back the first time they were all like malnourished and about to die mm-hmm. so like we, we didn't remember the gun but like it's been like 10 years it's been like eight years since exactly. then like surely daniel and Cruz had remembered the gun at one point so it just seemed i felt daniel who we know is very fastidious and like, why would you exactly yeah why would you just leave this gun there um so that was like yeah and again but obviously the idea of the gun coming back into play was, was quite um interesting to me but um, Which, but you know, so funny. Hmm? When I first saw that gun and wrench, my first thought was actually, "Oh my God, were there other people on Mars?" Just like Lee was, you know, did somebody else come bury this here? But I, I hadn't remembered at the time that that was the gun that they probably would have buried. I I didn't even think yeah. of what happened to the gun child. Maybe I thought they took. Oh it no, back with no, them. the show was they showed them burying it last season. I don't even remember that scene. And my oh, they, they showed them burying and they put they put the wrench there in la- last wow. season. That's why I did not remember that. I didn't remember that. So I was really just here, like, oh my God, is this a third a third entry into this? Is that has been is this what's like happening? Like, like yes. you know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm like, what's happening? I was like, oh, is it the spies? Did they bury this? So for me, who mm-hmm. has ADHD and short term memory, um, that did not remember that ranch, it provided mm-hmm. interesting thoughts for those first couple of minutes. Did you ever remember that it was like the gun from Lee? Or you just I mean, now that I'm saying it. I would say only when he was looking at it a little bit more. I was like, this looks familiar. Because at first yeah. when they showed the gun, I was like, what What are these markings? It's giving Mayan. I was like, oh my God, are the Martians up? So I was like, no, wait, wait, wait. I was like, wait, no, this looks familiar. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it must have been the gun, but I didn't remember them burying it. I just thought mm. they took it back or they just kept it. But that makes sense. Yeah, they buried it, but they should have taken it back because this is very poor form from from Daniel, especially. Like, why would they bury it? Well, I guess they buried it because, like, you don't want anyone to to get hold of it. But at the same time, like, they should remember to take it back when they're going back to Earth. That's just exactly poor form. Um. Okay. So, over on Ranger Two, everything seems to be working fine with the new discriminator box not drawing any attention. Um. Uh, ops com dev is communicating with the ghost ops via morse code mm-hmm. um speaking of ghost com the north korean official is still unconscious because obviously we, we said is he dead is he unconscious and lee decides yeah, that he has like... to take him to the yeah lee decides he has to take him to the med bay to avoid things getting worse um miles is telling all of us to shut up and he's doing very well under interrogation like we did we didn't believe like, him amazing. <laughs> Enough for us to call him. Uh, but his interrogators are getting, Please. yeah, yeah, yeah. His interrogators are getting more and more trigger happy though, and they try to torture him with CO two poisoning. But again, he continues to hold mm, his ground, which is hard. just like that was hard. very impressive. That was so impressive. Like genuinely, I would have tapped immediately. If I even turned the tank, so if you go downstairs, level four, right? Yeah, level four. Believe me. I'll even draw it for you. <laughs> I'll draw I the box. I'll give you a map to get there. When you talk about CO two poisoning, please, 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 please. Yeah. Uh, he begs them that he just wants to see his family, which triggers an idea in Mr. CIA man. 
So the CIA man uses his CIA powers to surveil Miles' wife and threatens her with prison and his kids with Bad CPS. Government. Yeah, which eventually breaks Miles and he tells him the location of a ghost ops. Over at and NASA, Margo is stunned by... <sighs> okay. No, we talk about that scene. Like, it was just yeah, so but... sad to watch because he was devastated to have to give him that information. But he's really mm-hmm. like, I'm sorry, my family... That was one of my favorite pieces of acting from whoever plays Miles. Sorry, I don't know his name, but Toby Kebbell, really yeah. Fantastic. Toby Kebbell ate that. He ate that deeply. I was I was distraught. I was really like And even CIA guy was I, looking quite sad. I think it touched him a little too. Just just a little bit. Mm. No, maybe not, maybe not that much. I think I give him too much credit. Oh no, my hole isn't I, open. Maybe let me come close. Yeah, okay, just, just a little long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think just on that front, well, obviously, fast forward a bit here, but I like when they bring the bearded ghost ops guy in and, like, he doesn't, like, he's not angry at Miles. So, like, he's he's more concerned when he sees Miles' face. He's like, oh, shit, you you lasted way longer than I would. Um, Okay, so we're on Earth over at NASA and Margot has a visitor. She's stunned by the surprise arrival of Irina in Houston. And mm. she then asked her later to go warn Sergey about Irina's presence. But of course, when Alida arrives at the motel, she's met with the news of Sergey's death. Um, I have on my notes that Coral, Coral Pena does so much work in this episode. Like, her face really does so does. much work in this episode. Really, really like, her face does. is just, she's just really doing so much does. face acting. Like, whew, devastating. Yeah, and then, I mean, obviously, these are things that we, we kind of knew what was going to happen. Um, like, let's, just, like, let's just stay with Happy, let's just stay in NASA for a bit because Aleda then goes to, she goes back to Houston, um, to NASA to inform Margo about Sergey's death, which sends Margo on this war path it's straight for Irina. Oof. Um, what did you think when she was shouting at Irina like this? I thought, yes, baby, keep going. <laughs> I said, go harder. You, it gave you me weren't afraid shame. for her safety? I was afraid no, for the her thing safety. is, like, I knew her safety was going to be questioned after the fact. So I just wanted her to go harder in the fact. I mean, there's nothing Irina can do to her right fucking now. Like, Irina is going to punch her. The best they will do is hold her. So she might as well say, like, was it worth it? Why did you kill him? Yeah, she's a killer, y'all. You heard that? Murder first. Irina murders first. She she said, you knew him. You worked with him. And still, Irina's like, girl, relax. Okay, you need to chill. This is not the place. Yeah. Yeah, you could see it in Irina's eyes. She was, she was, she was cool. We'll talk about karma like, oh. for Irina later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess we will. I guess we will. Um, yeah, so back on Mars, um, during another search of Happy Valley, the police force finds the gun. So now we're doing hot potato with the gun. Um, again, I, Which I think I might be... Which is very interesting... That was very interesting for me because... I'm sorry, sorry for cutting you off, and I'm sorry if I'm no, 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 go the ahead. Only one this, but I was like, when I saw this gun come into play, my first thought was this gun is going to absolve Miles in some way. Like if they're searching, they find the gun in someone, they're either going to think, A, this person is working with Miles, or B, okay, maybe Miles is not the person we should be looking at. But they were gonna look at him regardless. Too many people have said his mm-hmm. name. But when the guy found the gun, I kept it in his pocket. I was like, baby, what what's the motivation right now? Why are we keeping the gun? Fair. Yeah, I mean, I think I knew once the gun came out, I knew that gun, like it was going to hurt somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, everybody kind of knows about like the Chekhov's Chekhov's gun of storytelling, which which is why <laughs> I was surprised when like the gun didn't appear or the gun wasn't used last season. I was like, oh, they're, they're kind of subverting this. For anyone who doesn't know, Chekhov, Chekhov's gun is, speaking of Russia, is a rule in storytelling where essentially the idea is don't introduce something. Everything that's introduced into storytelling must have a payoff. Yeah, a purpose. Yeah. And, it's over the time it's come to almost literally mean a gun. So it's like if a gun is introduced in a scene, it should go off in a later scene. Um, Which is why most times you you can check it whenever you watch anything. If a gun is shown or brandished, most times it will be shot. Um, But yeah, so I think, again, I don't know if I'm being unfair. And maybe I was watching the show in a bad headspace. I don't know. But again, I'm like, how was this gun not found in the previous searches that they've done? Yeah, why was it this like one you're time? asking too much of us to suspend? Like, just like we know they've been doing such as it was like, only found two months ago. What was different? Yeah, about this, sir? no, not even that one. Like, we know that it's been on the base for two months, 
exactly and they've been doing searches and ever exactly. and they've never it's like come on like, you know you know i'll give it to them those other searches from where they made it sound they weren't aggressive you know it was a lot of fair enough they were just like they were, yeah okay we can allow that where the the meme of that security guard that just like touches the body and is like go, exactly. go through exactly just it's vibes it's but yeah i mean once the new guy gets the gun you're like okay this is obviously going to play a part at some point because again chekhov's gone um they don't show that gun like four times now i'm like yeah yes <laughs> dev <laughs> warns ghost ops about daniel's incoming search which gives him enough God. time to get away but the guy with the beard is caught and lee hides the rest of them in the north korean module okay this is just escalating <laughs> but obviously like, as daniel them find ghost ops they have to shut it down they inform ranger 2 they inform nasa everything and they're able to basically get their their plan back on track um mm -hmm. ghost ops north korean division then figures out a way to use the north korean radio to talk directly to sam obviously we discussed last week like, we didn't know if there was a North Korean person on Ranger 2. Exactly. So, and they showed us that not only is there another one there, there's at least 10 North Koreans on that base, okay? At least 10. Yeah. <laughs> and the North Koreans have even put a, a rule in the M7 that they are allowed to talk privately with their own people, privately, which is just, no it's just insane. It's just how we let them get away with so much espionage. Like, is it that deep they'd be part of the M7? Like, I, well, I, guess, they were the, I guess they were the first. You can, you I can't guess not they were the part. first on Mars, I guess so. Yeah. But, you know, if the U.S. and Russia, if the U.S. was a little different, nobody would have ever known that. You know what I'm saying? Just... True, true. Um, if Daniel just popped him in the head. Ooh. Daniel, Daniel <laughs> and Kuz. And then now the kind of the drama starts to ratchet up because basically um, Dev and Ed tell Sam that they want her to go out and manually disconnect some shit. Why does Sam agree to do this? You see me saying the fuck shit they, that Sam, they had her doing. That's what I wrote. The fuck shit they had her doing. Fuck shit. Because what do you mean? You already said I should do discrimination. I've already done that one. Now mm -hmm. you need to exit the ship. Wow. We're not stable. We're not moving slowly. We're speeding, carrying an asteroid. You want me to do it? Well, we're speeding, carrying an asteroid. You want me to go down there? <laughs> yeah. It... Manually use my hand to be doing wire, wire work. In space, mind you, we're speeding again. And then you tell her to use her tether and, and basically just so float much. it. And then you said, fuck my life. And said, hey, we need to hold this thing up. Is it that you hold it up or you go back up? And let her choose between her life or the job. And shout out mm -hmm. to Sam because she's really brave. Because at so many points, I'd be like, nah, fam. But why, do, why does she... Me? But even excluding bravery and fear, why does she agree to do it? Because you have to this know that her once yeah, and once you get out, you know that they are going to know, like, they're going to know that you, you know enough about this um, ranger to know that once you open the hatch, it's to be alerted. Exactly. Meaning, whether you're successful or not, they will know, know that you, you that you did this and you get punished. So, I don't understand the logic, like, because you're doing this for, for money. Like, you're not doing this mm -hmm. for space. You're doing this because you, you deserve to work more and get more money. But then if this happens, you get punished and you get nothing. So I just this is the part where I'm talking about like character motivations. To me, it just didn't make sense. I, I didn't know there was no there was no I speech. Think like, of, um, in that point, Sam is one of those people who she's of the greater purpose of the greater good, you know. And she's already shown that with the fact that she didn't take the money when she had the opportunity to, that she was willing to die, starve for this cause of getting more money. Now imagine if that person who did that, Dev. Her boss, the ogre, asked the very literal fucking talk. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, wanna help me do this? And it's not only yes, you get financial benefits, but it's like we want to build this place into a colony. You know, this is so you think Sam is. cares about the like, the mass I think colony she's of it? Just a little bit into the the Kool Aid juice. I feel like that's really the only not money. I don't think money is motivating her. I don't think she cares that much about the money. She seems like righteousness within her as well moving out that's and so interesting because made this a purpose now it's like they're not just fighting for themselves they're not fighting for money they're fighting so that you know they don't give up on mars you know and that trickles down to all of the workers all of everybody they need mars to continue that's my thoughts that's so interesting because i i think the people that think about that or care about that are dev and ed 
Like I feel like yeah, everybody else is doing it because care about that in terms of their personal self, like for their lives, they want to be yeah, I... so they need Mars to be livable. I think for Sam, she cares about it based on the other people who are working on Mars, currently planning to continue working on Mars. They see this as a monetary opportunity to help their families back on Earth. She's of mm-hmm. that that caliber, so she might not be thinking of herself necessarily, but she's just thinking maybe like everybody's really going to lose out from this. Like once we finish, like it's gone. Then we're back to earth and you know back to unemployment and that's fair that. enough i mean that might be what she's thinking. so i never i never want shows to like dumb things down and explain things i think you should always, but i don't know if maybe we did a scene there or a piece of dialogue they're just explaining kind of like sam's thinking like kind of like and maybe i'm sam maybe i'm the one know. Yeah, maybe I'm no. the one missing it. Maybe you're. Maybe I, I feel it's like obvious. no, it's not obvious. I feel like getting Sam's connection to this is definitely you gonna have to pull things together because we understand our original motivation is to get more money mm-hmm. for the worker safety rights etc. So now it's like okay, well they don't want to care for the workers, but obviously we weren't satisfied with that. Now she's been pulled into this whole other thing. It's like okay, what you are doing was small beans. This is the big beans. You want them to really you know survive and from this get the things they deserve. We need to invest in Mars, and this is how we do it. I think, you know, she's just looking for a cause. But again, we can't really say that's her direct motivation, really. Maybe she's yeah. just going with the crew at this point because there were all that's left. And I guess she's like, well, one team, one dream. Because also, there is at this point, there is no chance of it being a secret anymore. Once you do it, no. everybody will know it was no. you. Once she opened that hatch, it was over. Mm-mm-mm. So that's why I'm right. just like, is it, we never, I mean, I just think like we never got the idea that she was that invested in the yeah, larger world view for her to be mm-hmm. like, yeah, fuck it, fuck it. I don't care if people know it was me. Because we put um, ourselves through all of this. Like, that's something that she doesn't even care that much about. Like, girl, she better than me. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll get to some in a second. But before all of that, Daniel, when Ranger informs Happy Valley of what's going on, Daniel sends Palmer outside to, to deal with the situation. And we'll get back to them in a second. However, in Happy Valley, the CIA guy tells Daniel that they believe Ghost Ops is hiding in North Korea. And when he mentions that they are considering basically storming a sovereign nation on Mars, <laughs> Daniel radios Lee so that she can speak directly to Ed. They have this little back and forth where it's basically like, this is my home now. Mm-hmm. Um, Daniel is like, are you mad? He's like, we're, that's we're, the difference. We're Earthlings. You know, Earth is our home. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, no, my family is here. This is my home. And she's like, and I like the fact that, Ed, that Lee is like, this is my home too. And exactly for Lee, it makes sense because it's like, yeah, I'd rather be here than back in North Korea. So that actually kind of makes sense. And I think, actually, no, I should, I should talk about what I said earlier. I think for the three of them, Lee, mm-hmm. Dev, and Ed, yeah, I understand why they're doing it yeah. beyond money, mm-hmm. beyond like we get to get 10 years worth of money instead of one year. Um, and even for Kelly, there's... because think about it, for Alex, Mars is a better place for him to yeah, be yeah, anyway. Yeah, I mean, Kelly has like back one home, shot but her mother-in-law, she don't care. So, her too. I mean, look, we haven't talked about this. So, you're just saying that Alex, he's not going to have friends growing up if, if they want to just leave Other on Mars? Other people will give birth. Yes, he might be the oldest of the rest of the crew, okay? But he won't be the last. I don't he think... He won't be the last. But... Other, other families might end up moving to Mars. Well, like, I mean, I, I assume by... Family. Yeah, I assume by next, I assume by next season there will be families on Mars. But like mm-hmm. these, the, but Kelly doesn't know that. Kelly doesn't know that that's yeah. what the future holds. Yeah, but Alex also he didn't seem like one that really missed his friends. He was already on Mars, yeah. quite frankly. You think he does better <laughs> with adults? I think so. I think he does yeah. better, you know, by himself. Mm, true. Um, Mission Control in Houston devises a plan to remotely cut off Rangers' engines in order to Here they the introduced the race back in. What we love the most about for all mankind, a race yeah. to the finish. Who gonna get it? Who gonna get it? <laughs> That's true. I didn't actually, I didn't actually clock that. You're right. You're right. Actually, yeah. Um, you're right. And then, but meanwhile, Margot is invoking the memories of Verna and Sergey to basically convince herself to be Team Dev. Um, yes. And let's not add that. Obviously, yeah, Sergey's dead. To really push her. Yeah. Towards obviously, because obviously, Sergey said, Sergei said one of the last things Sergey said. Mm-hmm. So this this works better than the Sam one because we have a history of, we we have four seasons worth of history with her later. But again, it was still something that was a bit difficult for me to just like immediately accept. 
that lady are just gonna be like, yeah, fuck it. Let's, let's Yeah, let's just put the code. Let's sabotage this whole thing. <laughs> and then let yeah. me do it. it like is it was like, like, yeah, oh, I, okay. one. I was like, girl, okay, I get it. You want to wear your big girl pants? Yeah, I understand. Don't think this is the one, though. Because she, like, again, she, we've never seen her have any objections to this thing. I mean, it was basically her idea. Oh, no, Not no, it was outright. Eli's idea. Like, she, un- she understood. She's like, yeah, I guess, you know, that makes sense. But she, at the end of the day, she's also doing NASA, well, dev work. She's doing, she's doing the science. Yeah, but I mean, in Lending Grant, she was all for it. Like she was all for this plan to for it to come to Earth, and like I understand, yes, I understand that if Margo science. starts, yeah, because if Margo starts speaking spy, science stuff, I understand that she mm-hmm. can be convinced. But exactly. again, that's relying a lot on on our history with Alida, yeah. Like because and I still think it's a job, especially yeah. I would say you know the things that accelerate the factor is one they just killed Sergey, mm-hmm. definitely accelerated whatever decisions she was making then. Like Margot said, let's just do it. She's like, honestly, baby, you need a win. Let's do it. Yeah. I mean, I have in my notes that I was like, I mean, Coral Pena does her absolute best to sell it. And in a different mm-hmm. season where I wasn't questioning so many other characters' motivations, I might have allowed myself yeah. to buy it. Like, it's just because I think it was, it was the compounding factors because like, I'm like questioning yeah. Sam, I'm questioning this, I'm questioning, I'm like, oh, too many people. But like, Let if this was the only one. From my non-questioning point of view, for Sam, obviously, is the greater good. For Alida, mm-hmm. I would say it's definitely her feelings for Margot, her, her love yeah. for Margot, her compassion. But for I her think as well. my problem with them be like too many explanations being had. We're having to explain too many times. Yes, but they're being explained by feelings. You know, these are things you won't say. You know, they're mm-hmm. they're they in it, so you know you can explain feelings. So yeah, I got your form, my kind. I got your. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'm not. Let let let's not let's not paint it like I'm the form and kind hater. Let's let's no, 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 still let's still love this show. Providing real analysis because it's like um, yeah, you have to you have to pull from the sky, but you can pull. And then Palmer and Sam have a space fight. Palmer is one dirty dog. You see the way the minute they noticed the hatch was open, the first thing he said, "Where's Sam?" I said, "Uh, mm. <laughs> he's, he's on he's on his job." It so, was our agenda. <laughs> I promise I think this is the last time I'll be negative on this episode. <laughs> Hopefully, I think so. I remember I know it's properly. And I'm thinking about this since I watched the episode a few days ago for the first time. Because I think this whole space fight thing, there's a ticking clock, you have to um put it pull up the whatever and keep it tethered and stop. Like I think visually it works. Sonically, it works like they always just work for <laughs> one kind, like they know what they're doing. But since I'm thinking about it, I feel like I don't know if it works emotionally because mm-hmm. I think the problem is that the two people that are involved, I mean, let me speak for myself, I don't care about them like that. Like I don't if care Sam about or Palmer, the you don't care about the asteroid. No. <laughs> but like if Sam or Palmer died in this space fight, I don't think I would have cared. Real. I think I might have cared a little bit about Sam because she was being really brave. Palmer, I actually was hoping he'd die, but you know, Sam's a better person than I. But um because he really was about to throw that babe to die. He he literally threw her to her death, not even giving a damn yeah. what happened to her. But Sam, I would have been hurt if she died because she'd already gone through so much. She's had to do the discriminator, she has had to go out, she has had to use her chemical to hold the mm-hmm. the 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 handle. She's done that. Now she had to fight Palmer. Palmer pushed her, she came back. <laughs> She had died at all that I'd have, I would have been like, damn. But I wouldn't have gone too crazy. I'd be like, damn. I'd have been more sad that, you know, that's the end of their plan. You know? Than Are you I'm more invested in that. Sam? Are you more invested in Sam this season than you were with Will at the end of last season? 100%. Really? I felt no ties to Will. Like, even Sam, I feel no ties to Sam as well. But it's just like, I've seen her... Fights. Like, not like Will's fight wasn't real. It was real. It's just, you know, I guess maybe I should say I'm used to it now. You know, that's 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 the norm in my real life. In the space world, I feel like what Sam was risking was a lot more. There was a lot more ground for her. She was risking literal death. And Will was risking death there. But like, you know, yeah, I mean, Earth. I think because I'm just thinking back. I think when I think it was Ellen, when she announces that they're giving, I think, a camera, maybe it was a medal. Yeah, or the medal of honor. Yeah. I remember, it, I, oh, know, I, I wasn't something. crying. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I felt I got, it because, like you said, 
we deal with these real things in real life. Like it's not mm -hmm. not going to touch you that compassion as we should have for people just wanting to be their fucking selves. <laughs> yeah. Preach, but yeah. I feel like we didn't care about Will other than that. We didn't care about him. We didn't know nothing about Will. I don't, I don't, think, I don't think I care about Sam. I don't, I, I don't care about Sam either. But see the difference is we spent way more time with Sam. Way you, more time think, with Sam. I don't Sam. think so. I, think I, think, so. I feel like Will was in a lot of scenes, but he wasn't really leading them. Sam has been leading or important in most of her scenes. She has carried the fight on her head. She carried her best friend's death on her head. She was Mal's companion. She has now mm. been the one that ran the whole the whole lockup. She's the one that they have entrusted to go and do Ranger too. Yeah, we spent a lot of time with Samantha. <laughs> yeah, I think this is this might be the this is the problem with like introducing so many new characters and all our favorite characters are too old. Are gone, yeah. So yeah. because you can imagine that if this was Kelly, for example, who again? It's not like I'm not like over the moon. I'm not I don't that like invested Kelly. But, Kelly. <laughs> but but you but I think the, the difference would be clear. The difference would be clear if it was Kelly I mean, that was fighting with Palmer in that scene. It's Ed's daughter. Um, are you kidding me? Yeah, exactly. So, I don't know. I, I, I feel like emotionally that fight did not really hit Do for me. For I wasn't you. like, yeah. I think for me it hits in the terms of the race. I was like, whichever one wins here, wins the asteroid. So I was like, I think yeah, also, they don't have time. <laughs> yeah, I, but I think I, obviously I mentioned it last week that I didn't really care which way it went. Oh, baby, you know I was Team Mars all the way. You were Team, yeah, yeah, you were Team, yeah. Team, yeah. Team, team Dev. Like, yeah. It didn't go to Mars like the show is ending. Like, yeah, they could have taken it to, you know, other places. But I just feel like, you know, the point is, you know, for all mankind. We just oh, oh exactly. I, I also knew that the show wanted it to go to Mars. That, that's what, that's the mm -hmm. show's ethos, to, for it to go to Mars. And yeah. if it didn't go to Mars, it would have had to have a reason for it not to go to Mars. Which again, just to me, that's just interesting drama, whichever way. So yeah. I wasn't really like, which one is going to happen. But, yeah. but I still most likely believed that it was going to be like, 100%. that it was going to go to Mars. But I just, I just, I don't, this was the big thing. This was the big space fight of the season. You get like, we we, we get a yeah, big space. Yeah, it was space a little anticlimactic. Yeah. If you compare it, and again, I don't like to compare, but if you compare it to just even last season. Yeah. Right. There's the thing about Ed and Kelly. And yep. like, most likely, you know that Ed is going to get Kelly to the moon. So that part course, looks, Ed sorry, not survive. to the moon, to Ranger. Yeah. So that part looks great. Like, I still have this shot of like, Kelly basically I literally still walking. see it in the air. Like, literally. But we don't know whether Ed is landing. Yeah. I thought Ed was going to die. There were, there was, there were stay, and obviously, it's, it's difficult to compare to Ed because Ed Baldwin is he's the main character. He's, he is, yeah. The he's the guy. But like, so that's a bit unfair. But like, those are the stakes. Yeah. Here, it's just... Yeah, it was... I, I say, yeah, it was definitely very anticlimactic. Like, even when I was looking at the time go down, I was like, oh my God, they're running out of time. But I was like, it didn't seem as dire. You know, I was like, the time was just going. Like, I wasn't like, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, what's going to happen? I have to cover yeah. my eyes. Like, that's how I usually feel. Like, Jesus. Oh my God. Oh my God. And I think I think that was the emotional part. I, don't, I just don't think we're, we're into yeah. I think maybe they thought we'd be more invested in Sam as a character, but we just... No, I don't know why you think that. It was annoying me. But, you know, yeah, I like, like, yeah, I'd rather be annoyingly righteous than, you know, just terrible. So... And I also think they, they think we'll be more invested in Miles as a character. And you know what I'm going to say? I was. They By got the me. They got me. They got me. You see what we've got but I think that's Miles. because we we figured out... I mean, we always knew what he cared about, but here it's yeah. like, it's in it really danger. Showed. And it's, you see it, how it, far it, he's it, willing to go. Him. It redeemed him. Because I was mm -hmm. really... You see, I called him Miller for like three weeks because that's some fuck shit behavior shit he did. It showed zero integrity. And you know what they did? They brought the integrity right back. They brought the integrity right back. They he said, this is a good man, Samantha. Okay. <laughs> Samantha, literally. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. So let's, thanks to Margot, primarily thanks to Margot and Alida and their, their nerd coding. The heist is successful. Mm. Um, much to, I but just the way they caught that code was too quick. Ah, he was like, that's not right. I was like, what were you looking at? Ah, ah. Uh, you know? Are you trying to say he's not smart enough? Maybe he's smart enough. I, like I can't. Not smart. I'm just like, why did he catch it so quickly? Like, you could not just sit down because and wait for it. <laughs> no, no, because it was gonna it was gonna be on his head. They were gonna be like, "What did you do? How did you fuck it that's up?" So he was true, like, "Nah, let me let me find this problem before any, before anybody comes." To exactly. Let me we'll find out who I'm going to blame. I was like, he couldn't chill. Because remember, it was his idea. He it was. His... He said, "I'm not having it." No, that's yeah. wrong. It was his idea. It was his code. It was like, no, 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 no. Before anybody comes and starts saying, "I don't want to have the old M7 on my on my head." Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and then big boss. Like, it was like somebody else put a code here. 
It was. Um, then I, Irina accuses Alida of sabotage. Uh, uh. And again, Alida is just breaking down, man. Alida is just like, <laughs> this, this is, she's scared as fuck. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what to say because I was going to do uh, it anyway. So like, um, I really think, oh, yeah. Yeah, then, so but, but Margot takes responsibility. Margot said she was the one that, that did it. Um, and you know what I wrote there? Hmm. Margot is the definition in this show to me of self-sacrifice. Huh? Huh. Yeah, but I guess she, she always had to do that. There was no way she was not going to. But yeah. Yeah. I think the whole Verna thing about Verna, Sergey's death, yeah, just kind of like just, she was yeah. like, "What's the point? I did all of this for what is it? Freedom is not free." Thank you very much. So yeah, it makes sense. She's paid the price. Um, twice she knew what she had to sacrifice too. Yeah, and to be fair, like she had nothing to lose. She's already seventy. Like she's already a traitor to both countries. Like quite frankly, nobody. I was cares thinking about, about that. Her. They have to like they have to put her in proper prison because. Traitor, Bro, that's, imagine, not, that's not a joke, imagine man. Imagine that this was your punishment. Me thinking they were just taking me to the gulag in Russia. They ripped off your diplomatic... You know what, we'll get to that. We'll get to that when we're, when we're doing the whole the whole thing at the end. But, okay. okay. Over Happy Valley, the trigger-happy CIA guy and his deputies are given the, the green wins. light. Dev's green light by the DOD to invade North Korea. Hashtag defund the police. And um, the North Koreans are like, we're defending our territory as Lee convinces them. Defend yeah. your territory. Don't let these Americans in. So they do I just mean, they're that. They're outnumbered, but yeah. Um, <laughs> and then Ilya, Petros, and the Russians save Miles let's, and be able to go stop Ilya some stars here. I thought he was going to kill that man, but that's a bad man. That's a good man. That's okay. a good man, Samantha. I know I said, I, I, just, I know I said to my last negative time. A few <laughs> you minutes said ago, what was his motivation? <laughs> Did they do enough work here for us to accept that Ilya is going to save Miles in this way? No. I don't know why Ilya went to save Miles. Like, it wasn't that deep. What Miles did to him, personally for me, I would have actually walked right by the door. I don't know. So, I, I, I get the idea. I get the, I think the idea is meant to be, like, class solidarity. And yeah, exactly. They see him doing good, you know, for the people. Or just, like, like, enemy of my enemy, like... Fuck these people that are putting their boot on our necks and everything. Just the Russians pulled up. I was shook, bro. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, like, ah? I, I, the, this guy, Miles put Petros in the hospital. My dear. It, it seems Petros like a, came busting through that door for Miles. So I'm just like, since that happened, these guys have shared two scenes, Ilya and Miles, and they, they looked at each other and didn't say anything. I just feel like you didn't, I just feel like the show didn't do enough work there for us to. On, or believe this I believe that no, they, were, turn. they were just selling our joy they were selling joy they were yeah I mean you're like because obviously it immediately happens my instant reaction is like oh that's so cool that's so Literally. nice but and then when, when I think G- about yeah. it I'm like that and this is the problem sense. this is the problem about analyzing shows that when you have to think about it you're like wait that that didn't make sense though like why would he do that like, like just in the moment you're just like how did he even know I mean I guess we can allow how he knew because he's a black market smuggler or whatever which is like he probably knew uh, it's like, and and they are fighting KGB. You know what it means for them to go against the KGB, Russia, and the CIA. So I'm just like, did you, did you do enough work? I don't. I don't think they did enough work there to like no. convince us. Oh, you know, we'll take it because I wanted Miles to live there. Okay. Fair. So. <laughs> um, but anyway, when the Helios workers hear about the the impending raid on North Korea, Miles leads a revolution against mm. the militarized personnel and Hashtag i'm just gonna add police. he cut off bishop as he was speaking which i wrote there bishop deserved to be cut off with the wrench mind you bishop is a cia guy by the way if yeah, yeah, yeah. Was speaking like what the fuck is the amount went <laughs> 10 out of 10 yeah uh yeah and yeah you're right and from there chaos ensues Ooh. and our two quote-unquote leaders daniel and mm. ed step out to try and, and calm things down mm. and then this is when you know like if you're Pink so you know the gun is about to play play, mm. play a part. And the um, is shaking. Mm. <laughs> it makes a reappearance, and at this point, I think it's obvious that one of Daniel or Ed is going to die by this gun. And the gun goes off, and we find out that it's hit Danny. And for the next five minutes, I was livid with this. I shrink. was screaming so loud. I was literally. My brother's like, "What are you watching?" I said. <laughs> so my thing wasn't I wasn't like oh shit a fan favorite character in Daniel is about to die because again we expected people to die I think at this point and this was again compounding so I'm happy spoiler alert obviously they 
she ended up not dying. However, that that they didn't go that route. Because then I'm like, why would she die? I couldn't see the logic behind it. I could see the logic of her getting shot, which was in that moment, that's the only person, every single person there cares a fuck about. And you could see it's in immediately what happened. The mm-hmm. whole, everybody stop. Whole base just watching. Daniel, are you okay? Danny? Hello? Wrenches dropped. Bullets forgotten. Man out here passing out from concussion and he literally died. But hey, mm-hmm. still watching for Daniel. They, re- they revere her. But like, if she had died in that scene, No, yeah, because just from a drama point of view, like, not not that everybody that dies in a story needs to have been deserving it, or but it's just like it's have been like, why you didn't apart from shock value? So, yeah. sp- not really, but light spoiler alert for Yellow Jacket season two. Someone dies. I'm not going to say who, obviously, for who haven't watched the show. And I remember, obviously, we covered this on the, on the on the on this podcast, and I was so livid because it made no sense to me. I was like, apart from the fact that this is a shocking death, it doesn't make any dramatical sense. Like, it's just it like... doesn't drive the plot? Like, why? It, it why? feels like you're just killing them for... And that's, that's how Danielle Dan would have been, just killing her for because... shock value. Shock value. It doesn't... It's not like... It's like... Like, Ed Dan would have made sense because he's basically had this whole villain... Villain era, era all season. He comes out to try and maybe salvage some stuff and like tell people this is not what we're fighting for whatever and then he dies and that that dramatically that makes sense but it just Daniel dying I mean I shouldn't stay on it because they didn't do it so like yeah it's and I feel like maybe that's, that they that's why it. they didn't do it because I think maybe they are maybe I don't know I'm just assuming here maybe their plan was to make the dead man speech obsolete because that's what I would have expected there that it was, yeah. that Daniel was going to die like the next scene you know after you know how the table everybody looking at her is like memorial service Daniel XXX you know what I'm saying yeah, and like, I mean, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad they didn't kill her. I, I think it makes the most sense. Um, it makes the most sense that she didn't die. It just... was for fan service. Thank you so much. For <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not to mention killing the black person in power. That just looks weird. The only? Uh, <laughs> the only black person in power. Because I know what they're trying to do with Will, but he ain't got... Again, who is that man? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know this man. <laughs> like with all disrespect, like love you though, mm, but um, what, what you know? I know more about Eli than I do Will. That's true. That's actually true. No, I think you're. Just, I think you're forgetting okay, a lot okay, about okay, what okay, happened okay. last season. We know. We know lots about. We know lots about. Will. I get it. I get it. We do. They've, they've tried to tell us a lot, but it's like what's sticking. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, Will had some things last season. He had some he did. emotional he, moments. No, last no, season. That, those moments with I can't remember his name, but the other Russian guy that was like. Yeah. His, like those, those were real. Like that was a real good plot point for me last season. But again, it's not. No, yeah, I get what you mean. That's all I know about him. He's gay. Yeah. Fair, but okay. Uh, the Russians withdraw Margot's <laughs> immunity. They took that shit back, like whew, while she was still in the US too. <laughs> which yeah, which means FBI arrests her on government. Why would they property. do this on government property? Why would they do this? Just to be spiteful. But I thought, I genuinely thought they were going to take her back to Russia and I like they were going punish to her, her there. To gulag, for yeah, real. Why, isn't that the more painful punishment? Why would it? This guess, seems like the easy way out. I guess for them, one, they're just getting rid of a defective product because they took they took yeah. her from the US and now she has <laughs> gone to go and sab- sabotage them. I better go back to your country, let them arrest you. Rubbish. To me, that's it's better a, for Margo. How ended up yeah, with Margo? I'm trying to say, like, if I'm Margo, I'm like, this is the better outcome. Like, I didn't expect this. Because even though I'm in Max Penitentiary for the rest of my life, at least I know I, I'll be okay. Yeah, I'm not, like, maybe in soon, a dark in, side I mean, with no windows. Me, can call me. But in the Gulag? Yeah. Um, I laid out rushes to hug Margo, and I think now we can say that, like, we are fully yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. really made my We're heart so, so happy, because that was so real. That was so real because I feel like Alida was in Margot's position kind of this season. Like, you know, going between Margot and Sergey, you know, mm. doing what she's doing. And I'm like, she can kind of understand a little bit of what Margot was doing now, the position she was in. Even when she tried to stand her ground and say, I'm not doing it. And she said, please, Alida. Where did Alida go? Alida went to Sergey's house. So, you see, it's not as easy as you think sometimes. And I'm glad mm-hmm. that we've come to that point with their relationship because yeah. I think it was worth saving. Um, best relationship on the show. I have to think about that because this show has some really, really good relationships. Like, I think it might be the because 
before this season, it have been them and Daniel and Ed. But I think now mm-hmm. it might just be them. Yeah, because Daniel and Ed are having a breakdown of a crisis yeah. of difference, difference, you know, liberal. Democratic. Even that whole look, that look that they share when they both come out to try and stop the thing. And Daniel is basically like, see what, this is what you Look how you post. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I think like, I'm so sorry, but yeah, definitely for me, yeah. I think they would be my I favorite. I think Mark and Alida. Uh, okay, let's just, I'm just going to quickly run through like the epilogue and the things that happen over this Margot's speech that she's giving to the judge about humanity and stuff. Um, so first of all, we see that presumably the KGB agents are investigating Irina's office. Um, she done for? I guess the impression is that maybe they're investigating things that she did to people like Sergey. Maybe I not so okay. I think they're investigating how the fuck did the agent you're handling go and sabotage us in this mission. Okay. Do you think they give a fuck about Sergey? Okay? No. Okay, that might that, 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 that works. That, 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 <laughs> that, what you said makes sense. Wait, yeah, that, that makes more sense actually. Because I was I was trying to figure out what, what are they doing, but then that makes sense. They're like, yeah. Ah, they're you, like you embarrassed us on a global scale. Maybe you, somebody's head got a roll this year. Yeah, you brought in this defective product and you you let you it gotta pay the piper. under you. That makes sense. Okay, that actually makes a lot of sense. I'll take that here. Yeah. Um Mouse is <laughs> you're fighting for for all mankind's corner. <laughs> uh Mouse's torture report is leaked to the press, which I guess puts out of um a spotlight on both NASA and, and the CIA. Mm-hmm. Um Lee's wife finally arrives. Baby, I screamed so loud you could not believe it. I said I thought this was a pipe dream. When he said it, I actually laughed. I said you want them to bring your wife from North Korea. And they brought his wife from North Korea. But more importantly, with others, and I guess maybe <laughs> comically, depending on how you're looking at it, she arrives with other people, other refugees, North Koreans, refugees. which I think I, I didn't see the storyline as a refugee storyline. Me either. Which I guess makes sense. So they so they are almost like underplaying how big the journey. Like it's basically just going from going by sea. Mm-hmm. Like whatever, all the journeys are refugees. Like once do you make it world. into the ship, you're you're getting there. Yeah, it's not. We are like, oh, what do you mean go to Mars? And I'm just like, no, like, no, no. It's just like, would you die? No. Yeah, we're just like, no. It, container, yeah, okay. Exactly. It's just going from North Korea to Mars, a different country. Like so, <laughs> uh, and I guess obviously once they are in, once they're on Mars, they can basically call ask for immunity or not immunity mm-hmm. sorry um refugee status yes, exactly. north korea yes, doesn't have to pull them back in yeah so exactly how would north korea even take them would i have wanted to know how they did this maybe i would have because you know like i'm like okay first of all smuggling one person okay but like 30 40 50 how did we do this i had to see the logistics of mars actually because like Ilya was like it's not us. possible exactly they didn't show like, us how possible. mars to earth travel works and earth to mars because even with mars sending back all that stuff and coming i'm like i want to see the process of the shipments you know let me mm. see how they're flying so maybe when i'm understanding the smuggling i can understand that okay they went through this route this route and they got here because right now to me it's just we're teleporting i mean it seems like it's basically not how to do it now but like they're in a crate Obviously, yeah. it's kitted off with oxygen and everything like that. But like, yeah, they probably. But yeah, we don't know where the. the but why did they have are. that crate in the first place? Was it to you know smuggle animals? Like I don't know. It could we just be a big because, crate for products? Every, now? I guess, I guess so. But to put oxygen inside, why the product need that? No, no, I think it's be retrofitted. Like mouses, people have done that for the oxygen. Oh, okay, in. okay, I see what you mean. Okay, because I was like, yeah. if that's something they just made, it would have to serve some other purpose. No, no, I think it's just a normal crate, and mouses people have found a way to like put Fair oxygen in to and everything. Jake. Yeah, but again, it's like this is the show is as, and I guess you can so do it in well. your. Sorry, I said we're doing so well. I could feel the negativity. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll, I'll stop. I'll stop. It wasn't. It wasn't going to be negative, negative, but it was going to be skeptical. Maybe I'll, that's I'll something they'll show us next season because Late obviously words, by next no. season, no, but next season mass travel that be fully developed. Maybe we will see the actual flight happen. You say, oh yeah, but that, we wouldn't see like the smuggling of it, like smuggling that people. Far, no, yeah, unless it becomes Where's, a big thing next season where that's what they're doing now. But they wouldn't need to... I guess maybe if the travel is too expensive. Yeah. Because this one was about workers' rights. Next season could be, could be about, you know, genocide. Jesus. <laughs> um, I mean, this is this is the most negative the show has ever been. Yeah. If, like, this, there's person. been nothing cute about this season. Like, the other seasons, you know, we're going on the space race. It was cute. It was fun. This is yeah, like, it's not really oh, optimistic. It's not really an this, optimistic this season. Comes through, it's not pretty. People are dying. Which I guess is a good thing that it ended po- positively because... 
it's it's yeah, real. It helps balance I like it that. Off. It gives yeah. exactly. It balances the 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 fun. Oh my god, yeah, 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 yeah. With the realistic, like, okay, yeah, let's give this, let's put this back on earth a little bit. Let's bring the people hmm. grounded again. But yeah, love it. Yes. Yeah, speaking of Earth, we see that Danielle survived, and we see her reuniting with her family. Yeah, black keep god, black they, families together. They played us with that video so bad. They played us so fucking bad. Oh my god. Uh, oh my god. Interestingly, though, there is police presence at the airport. So I don't know if, like, people um, have been maybe, arrested. Maybe escorts energy. Okay. Not like the arrest of people yeah. that were involved in the Yeah, because the those people weren't coming back. So who would they have arrested? You can force them to come back now. That's true, but would he? Hmm. I mean, I think <laughs> it's... So we end the show, we end this ep- this episode, this season, with a shot of Dev in 2012, staring at Goldilocks. Such a beautiful zoom out shot as well. I had to note that down. Oh. Yeah. And Goldilocks now has this new Kuznestov station, new Dr. Kuz, obviously, and I'm guessing that's like the mining station. One thing about man, they're going to just, everybody was screaming, no mas, no mas, no mas, now they've built the station. But we only, I think it's very interesting that we only, is Dev is the only person we see in 2012. Yeah. We, because I love that they're leaving us in question marks because we literally don't know what happens to anybody else. Mind you, this is years later. So mm-hmm. it's like, what 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 has gone on? Why is Dev standing here? Is Kelly inside at the back? Is Ed dead? Is that Dan- Danielle on Earth still? Is she happy? Like, we don't know. Is we literally have prison, no like... idea. Is Margot dead? Is Alida even still working at NASA? B? They can't trust her. We literally don't know. So you're right. They really. This is the first time that we were going to the new season in very unpredictable, mm-hmm. like, anything could happen child we could be doing for all mankind new generations next season for all we know and alex and <laughs> yes Daniel's children are running this shit like don't know. yeah um yeah no because like it's it's probably the, i mean obviously obviously previous seasons there's always this kind of flash forward either it was the rocket taking off yeah. you know season one season two was the boot on mars which ended up being lee's boot season three was margo in russia you really have those teases but I think this is the first time that, like, the actual storyline almost ends on a cliffhanger. Like, I can't yep. tell you what happened to any of yep. the other characters apart from nope. Margot. I can't even tell you what happened between, like, literally nothing. Like, Margot oh, went to, Margot you? went to oh, prison. Oh. Margot went to federal prison and Danielle met her family. I don't That's know what it. happened to Miles. I don't know what happened to Ed. We don't, I don't even know, know how many Sam. years after Danielle came back. Like, we just don't know. Yeah. Anything. I'm sure. I'm, I, Is yeah, she, like, still the head of NASA? We don't know. Yeah. I doubt I like that would be ten. I mean, maybe ten years. I, I mean, know. Margo lasted a while. Yeah. So, well, again, it's like a new president might bring in a new energy. I'm so excited! Like honestly, it almost makes me want to rewatch the whole show up to this point just to prepare myself to see this new phase we're going. So I have a bunch of people because obviously we're talking about this show for a lot of people. I started watching from season one, and I do want to re. If I if only I, can, I can't find the time. I was gonna. Say I would that like to rewatch be... season one and two. When I posted, the, I would love to watch season one or two. Like, I don't think you guys understand. When I watched season one, it felt like I discovered crack. I was like, oh my God, guys. And you should know because you remember how you felt when you discovered crack. Thank you so much. In Snowfall, yeah. I did. So I was right there with Franklin. <laughs> yeah. Um. So it's just like, oh my God, guys. I can't believe the show is so good. And I've been watching mm-hmm. it since season one and it has yet to disappoint me. And these are hour, hour and a half long episodes here, baby. Ain't nobody got that time to waste. Believe me, I don't. I watch way mm-hmm. too much. So all I'm saying, guys, is get on the train. It's not the train. Well, hopefully anyone Actually, that's this is already on the train. But yeah. Get on the ship. Get on Ooh. the ship. Get in the that's container. Exactly. We can smoke the oxygen. Up to oxygen fit up the container. Um, but no, like I said earlier, it's like, it's a finale that like, it's a finale, like most of the season, it's a different kind of season for, yeah. for mankind. And we like, we didn't cover the first half of the season, which I think actually helped us a bit because I didn't really, I didn't love the first half of the season, and I felt yeah. like if we're covering it, I would have been more critical. Yeah, you know, just like of it. Was my fucking time. So that wasn't intentional; that was just a coincidence. And but luckily, that happened. And like, there's some highs. I think there's some highs. Like the yeah. Leningrad episode was incredible. Beautiful work. Do you want to steal an you asteroid? Steal an asteroid. Stop. It was, it was <laughs> incredible. But Up there, we do you want I, to build a snowman? Like, come on. I, <laughs> I think I'm confident in that this is like this is the worst season they've had. Um, yeah. Just in terms of in terms of thrills and excitement in and everything. Thrill and in terms of in terms of emotional like investment as well. Investment. 100%, and imagine yeah. and even at that, see how I was screaming and saying, "Wait, 
You cannot yeah. imagine what we've been going through season one to five. Just, well, I'm yeah. like again, I'm still, I'm still fully on board. Like this, not, this is just, this That's is just, cool. I critique because I love kind of situation. Yeah, yeah. but you still um, watch hundred percent. Like with, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and I'll still tell everybody to start start the show today. Sure, yeah. Uh, but I'm excited for what happens next season. Thank Will you. Ed still be alive at That's 80? That's a good question. Are we gonna have? I'm, I'm a bit to scared. Have a of Ed on Mars, like, oh I, my god! I'm a bit scared <laughs> of Ed's 80 year old makeup man. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that'll be a jump scare. That's Ooh. gonna be a jump. Scare. Uh, like it's it's okay to let let's let let's let 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 him go 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 he's still pretty full of this we've already uh, descended into chaos with him that's a fine fucking man i remember when the first trailer for this season came out and i literally like the ed's face just appeared at the end i was like that's jump a jump scare. scare i was like what are we doing so you want to put 10 more years Oof, okay okay Ooh, we'll they see. said he's still alive okay <laughs> uh but yeah, yeah i mean i'm sort of a do you have any final thoughts you want to give about the um, season? Looking forward no, to season five. I enjoy. I'm really looking forward to the new season. Looking forward to season five. Like I just, I'm so excited. I'm happy to exist in a time that this show exists as a science lover, and as someone who just loves TV. Like, mm. uh, you know, there's a new space show coming out on Apple TV. I think Say it might worry. be at time this at this time this is airing. It's, I think Say it's January. I should have the name. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't have the name. No, but no, it has okay. it has Jonathan Banks, who you might know I'm from Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul. Uh, Mike, I'm in Trout, and it's like there's a space show coming out, so that should be fun. I love when I googled Apple TV space show. The first thing that comes up is for all my time. <laughs> yeah, maybe people people get to know about it. Uh, but yeah, there's a new space show coming up. Um, what was your best show of last year of 2023? Okay, so mind you, I haven't watched a lot this year. Like a lot of new shows. Um, Mm. My favorite show of 2023. I will go with my favorite season. Fuck, this is hard. It would be my favorite season of TV, The Bears. The Bear. Mm -hmm. The Bear. Season of The Bear was just ah, beautiful. And I'm I'm going to tell you, I made the mistake of watching the finale first by mistake because I wanted to binge it. I watched the finale. It's okay, we were doing Illegal Gang, and that's why this is why you shouldn't watch Illegal. Did that. And still, the season was slapping dummy. So at what point, at what point did you realize you were watching the last episode? I midway through the episode, but I was already too deep. So I was like, I have to finish. So finished and came back. And you know the thing, it still didn't affect it for me when I watched it again when I finished. Like I kid you not. It just made the impact was just a lot harder because now mm-hmm. the context was affecting me way more. Because at first I was like, who the fuck is this girl? And why is she talking to Carmi? I was like, who is this? So Oh fuck, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, You're so like, why is Richie wearing a suit? I was confused. Okay. And favorite new show would actually have to be The Buccaneers. Um, I think it's such a re- refreshing take on the Renaissance era like type of TV show. It's 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 beautifully just real. Like they talk about real girl shit and they do some real devious shit. And yeah, a little bit of mm, here and there, but overall, like that was a beautiful show. A little and bit of chemi- what? what was that sound? I won't talk about it. it mm, yeah, but the chemistry between Nan. And I'm not going to say his name because if you watch, I need you to feel it. It needs to slap you palpably not. But Nan and the man who she should end up with. Are these, are these two white characters? One white, one black, baby. Y'all thought Kate and Anthony oh, yeah. had chemistry? You're oh, on baby. That. that was not. So you're on, you're on that, you're, you're on that Vendetta. You're on that, that swirl. So I, I, I ain't on the swirl, but I am on love. It sounds... Okay. Mm. Sounds love, like love. If she had chemistry with the other person who was white, I wouldn't complain. She did, but it just wasn't. Oh, it's a white girl and a black, black there's man. There's no comparison. Yes, I'm sorry to spoil it for you, but there's no comparison, guys. I'm telling you, the chemistry is going to slap you so hard in the face, you're going to have to press pause. Like, it's it's enough. Like, should I get a room for y'all? Like, this is fake? Okay. It's one of the, it's one of the type of chemistry that reminds you that I can't believe y'all have partners at home. Like... I am not strong enough for that. But I've this was no way much. I thought this conversation was going to ask you the question, I, I, but I, I love said it. Too much. <laughs> I, love, I love it. Uh, no, I love it. Um, well, I mean, yeah, guys, come back in a couple of weeks and listen to my top 10 of the year. Yeah. Uh, I was in the book in the year, so it's not it feature, but the bear would prominently feature over the next few weeks, actually. There were quite a lot of bear coverage. Oh. I can tell you that a few episodes make our top oh, yeah. top fives. Hmm. Um, As they should, man. That's this season was just good, bro. I was so yeah. upset. I was like, I can't believe it's over. <laughs> yeah. What's my number one? Is it the bear? Is it Succession? Ooh, oh my knows? god! Stop! 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 You know I can't even talk about it because of the whole Wamsgate. But I'm, let's just move on, child. 
not worms. As in, you mean the spoiler of what happens at the end? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I love Succession deep, but I was deeply unhappy with Worms Gate. (laughs) No, you call it Worms. I mean, I think that's the point. Yeah, no. I think you've been unhappy with it. I think you've been unhappy with it is the point that like, everybody's expecting this one thing and it's like, that's not how corporate America works. I, should I think of, no, I, I actually, was it Succession? No, no. Exactly, yeah. I think that, I think, I think oh. you're having the right internal battle. That's, that's the battle everybody should have about what the best show about the year the was. Episodes, yeah. And I'm just like, I was really out here doing because they were going so dummy. I had just thought about shit falling. Actually, it must be succession. Two, very incredible, <laughs> Two very yeah. incredible seasons of TV. Two very incredible seasons of TV. Well, thank um, you guys for having me. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, I think. I'll probably wrangle you in for a few more shows over the course of the year. Oh, please. You know I love TV. Um, if you see me tweet about anything that piques your interest, just let me know. Yeah. We want to do We want to do more anime, so you'll probably be on there. <laughs> Come to me. Okay. Don't go I don't farther. know what that squeal was, but no, I, was I've heard like... too many sounds from you this, this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like... My friends um, used to call me a sound machine. Okay. Fair enough. So it's not, it's not a new thing. But no, no, thank you very much. I'm very happy that you were a For, Man- For Mankind fan and I enjoyed covering the show with you. I enjoyed geeking out over X Don't Give It To You. That was, oh, that would be... so much. I thoroughly enjoyed this. Like, you don't understand. Um, and yeah, like, awesome. like I said, I might have some problems with this finale. Not even mm. problems, just questions, actually, more. Not, yeah. not problems, just questions. But like, yeah, I would rather this than a cookie cutter show. That, yeah, that I don't care about. Dribble, so, yeah. yeah, guys, please stay with us over the course of the year but we want to do more we always want to do more we're going to cover more things we're going to hopefully have more cool ideas cool interviews for you guys um thank you for staying with us so far and angel thank you very much for your support and for coming on to talk about stupid tv shows with us thank you so Um, much for having me i love wasting my time on tv yeah uh yeah and guys join us next week when i'll be talking more tv with the one the only oscar winners Director of The Kitchen, which comes out very soon on Netflix, Daniel Kaluuya. Bye, guys. Bye.